Good morning and welcome to worship at Murrayfield this morning. I'm Gary Barclay and joining me today is John Martin, Kenneth Scott and our praise is led by Alison Scott. It's good to have you with us today and as we prepare our hearts to worship God let's hear from Colossians chapter 1 which says this Christ is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things were created through him and for him and he is before all things and in him all things hold together and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. So let's worship our God together. Eternal, faithful, and true, who bought. 
Let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, our Heavenly Father, we rejoice that Jesus Christ is Lord, Lord over creation, Lord over the universe. We thank you that in love for us and through his redeeming work upon Calvary's cross, where he gave his life as a ransom for us, we've been set free from the power and the penalty of sin. We've been brought to life in him and adopted into your family. We thank you too for your Holy Spirit who brings the presence and the power of Jesus into our lives. As we draw near to your throne this morning in worship, praise and prayer, we do so knowing that while we may come before you fully aware of our weaknesses, we come to a place of grace, mercy, and help. So open the eyes of our hearts this morning. Enlighten our minds that we may know the hope we have in Jesus, the blessings that are ours in him, and the power at work in us that we may offer ourselves lovingly and enthusiastically to your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For this reason, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks to God for you. I remember you in my prayers and ask the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father, to give you the Spirit who will make you wise and real God to you so that, you will, so that you will know him. I ask that your minds be open to see his light so that you will know what is the hope to which he has called you, how rich are the wonderful blessings he promises people, and how very great is his power at work in us who believe. This power in us is the same as the mighty strength which he used when he raised Christ from death and seated him at his right side in the heavenly world. Christ rules there above all heavenly rulers, authorities and powers and lords. He has a title superior to all titles of authority in this world and in the next. God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme Lord over all things. The church is Christ's body, the, co the completion of him who himself completes all things everywhere. Well, we are looking at Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, and last week we started to look at Paul's prayer uh, to the believers in Ephesus in verses 15 to 23. And we notice that Paul made two big asks of God, our Heavenly Father. Paul's first ask, you'll remember from last week, was for God to give these believers the Spirit who would give them wisdom and would reveal God to them so that they would know God better. Today, we're looking at Paul's second ask, which we find in verse 18, where he says, I ask that your minds may be opened to see his light, so that you will know what is the hope to which he has called you, how rich are the wonderful blessings he promises his people, 
and how very great is his power at work in us who believe. Paul prays that these followers of Jesus would get to know God better, but that every day they would grow in their understanding about God, but also in their relationship with God and their experience of God. So three things Paul mentions here in this second ask. Hope, inheritance, and power. Firstly, the hope. I ask, he says, that your minds may be opened to see his light so that you will know what is the hope to which he has called you. Now, what is this hope to which we have been called? You know, every day our minds are presented with the values of this world, of a world which focuses really an awful lot on self and in the present and thinks very little about the future and rarely about eternity. It's a way of life that Paul would describe here that leaves people spiritually dead, without hope, without God. So Paul prays here that the minds of those who belong to Christ would be opened so that they would know the hope they have in him. What is this hope to which God has called you? Well, it's the hope that comes from Jesus saying, I will never turn away anyone who comes to me. And that it is the Father's will that I should not lose any of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them to life on the last day. It's the hope of knowing that while we were spiritually dead because of our disobedience and sins, that God's mercy is so abundant and his love for us is so great that he brought us to life with Christ. It's the hope of knowing that we belong to his family and it is anticipation of being presented to Christ pure and faultless without spot or wrinkle or any imperfection. That's the hope that we have in Christ. What about the inheritance? Paul prays, I ask that your minds be open to see his light so that you will know how rich are the wonderful blessings he promises his people. What is our inheritance? You know, our inheritance is God himself. Do you remember when Jesus said to his, to his friends, to his followers, before he was uh, preparing to face the cross and uh, then subsequently to return to his Father in heaven, Jesus said to them, there are many rooms in my Father's house and I am going to prepare a place for you. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to myself so that you may be where I am. Our inheritance is to be with Christ. Our inheritance is him. To be with Christ. No wonder Paul can say in Philippians 1, what is life? To me it is Christ. Death then will bring more. To be with Christ is a far better thing. See, for when we are with him, we shall also be like him. Paul says in Philippians 3, we are citizens of heaven. That's what we are now. We are citizens of heaven. And we eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. He will change our weak mortal bodies and make them like his own glorious body, using that power by which he is able to bring all things under his rule. So we are going to be with Christ and we are going to be like him. We are going to have bodies like his own glorious body. We are going to live with him and be with him 
and share life with him. We shall live in unbroken and loving fellowship with God and with one another. That is our inheritance, kept in heaven for us. What about the power at work in the life of every believer? Paul's third part of this request is that this power working in us is the same as the mighty strength which he used when he raised Christ from death. And he wants us to know that power in our lives. It's the power that raises the dead. You know, as Jesus stood before Pilate, you'll remember Pilate asked Jesus, don't you realize I have power? I've got the power either to free you or to crucify you. He had worldly power. He could either set Jesus free or he could take Jesus' life from him. Jesus knew Pilate had that power, but he answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. In other words, you only have the power that my Father in heaven allows you to have. The power that is given to him comes from the one who holds that power and who has incomparably greater power than that. For all power, even Pilate's, belongs to him. Of course, the greatest power that stands against us is, as Pilate rightly said, the power of death. Paul says that the last enemy to be defeated will be death. We all face death, but it it has no power to keep us, no power to hold us any longer. Peter says, God raised Christ from death, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. And because of that, it is also impossible for death to keep its hold on you. And Paul is praying that you would know that the power that defeated death, the power that raised Christ, is the same power that is, work, that is at work in you, in your life, even now. You see, it's not just something that is there in some time in the future, in some day, in some moment when we enter into heaven itself. No, no, this is a power that is at work in your life even now. And that's why Paul can say in 2 Corinthians 4, we know that God who raised the Lord Jesus to life will also raise us up with Jesus and take us together with you into his presence. There's our inheritance. For this reason, we never become discouraged. Even though our physical being is gradually decaying, yet our spiritual being is renewed day by day. We want to know that, don't we? We want to know that. That although physically we are aging, we are decaying. Trust me, I didn't look like this 30, 40, 50 years ago. But even though this is happening to us, outwardly, inwardly, inwardly, God is renewing us day by day. So like Paul You can pray that you would know this power at work in your life right now. See, it all comes back to knowing God. Not just knowing about God, but knowing of God. And knowing of his work within you. His power within you, renewing you spiritually each and every day. Now, not only was Jesus raised from death, Paul says that he's now seated at the right-hand side of God in heaven. And that is important for us to, to know and to think about. You see, Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins. He rose again to, to bring us into a right relationship with God. And by his ascension, by his return to the Father in heaven, he showed the Father had accepted his sacrifice for sin once and for all. Which means that you and I can know that we are forgiven and accepted 
and that God delights in us, his children, those who belong to Christ. And there's even more to it. Christ is seated at God's right hand side. And what, he, what is he doing there? He is reigning, he is ruling over everything. God, says Paul, placed everything under Christ's feet. And he gave him to the church, as the head of the church. For the church is the body of Christ. Jesus is even now, in this moment, organizing everything for the good of the church. He's the head, we are the body, and he is organizing everything good for the church. And the only way we can know that power in our day-to-day living, in our day-to-day experience, is for God to open our minds and our, our hearts and our lives to that power. And that's Paul's prayer, that you and I come to know this incomparably great power the power of God that's in us and to know that we can draw upon that power every day. Every day you're being spiritually renewed. Every day God is doing something new in you. Every day he is bringing his spirit to bear upon your life, upon your circumstances, upon your experiences. Every day that power is there at your disposal. It's at work in you. From time to time, you know, we sing the hymn which has at its heart the pronouncement, Our God reigns. You know the hymn? But do you believe that? You see, when the world around you, and perhaps even the world within you, seems to spin out of control, you can still sing, Our God reigns. Our God reigns. So here is Paul's second part of his prayer. First part, that we would know God. Not just know about God, but we would know of God. That we would experience God in our lives. That we would have those experiences where we would be able to say, yes, that was God. God was with me. God brought me through. God blessed me in this way. God lifted me up in that way. God encouraged me. God comforted me, God corrected me, God directed me, God healed me, that we would know the experience of God in our lives, in Christ, but also that we would know the hope that we have in him, the inheritance we have in him, and the power that is at work in us, which is the same power the same power that raised Christ from the dead, seated him at the right-hand side of God, and which now rules and reigns over everything. May God bless you today. We bring before God our prayers for others. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring before you now our loved ones our families and our friends. You know them intimately and the circumstances, needs and concerns of each one. We name them now in the silence. May your spirit rest upon them. Fill them with your love and offer comfort encouragement and healing to those we have brought before you today. We pray for those in our communities who are suffering in all manner of ways in the midst of this pandemic, suffering from illness, isolation, anxiety and all forms of harm. We pray for them now in the silence. May your spirit rest upon them. Fill them with your grace and offer comfort, encouragement and healing to those we have brought before you today. 
We pray for those in our community who support and care for others. Carers of the elderly and of children. Doctors, nurses, pharmacists and all health service workers. All who are part of those agencies that provide such precious and vital support in these times of need. We pray for all such workers and volunteers now in the silence. May your spirit rest upon them. Fill them with an overwhelming sense of purpose. Lift their weariness and frustrations and help them to persist in the midst of the challenges they face. We pray for all who live in places of war, conflict and insecurity, whether at home or abroad. Those living in fear, those who suffer degradation and abuse, those who are collateral damage in civil and international terrorism. We pray for all victims, wherever they are suffering, in the silence now. Faithful Lord, whose love never ceases and whose mercies never come to an end, grant us the grace to trust you and to respond to the gifts of your love. New every day in Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we offer all these our prayers. Amen. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within Stone, cornerstone, weakness.
he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. Well, thank you for being with us again today. Hope you can join us next Sunday at the usual time of 10.30 a.m. Until then, may the dying Saviour's love, the risen Saviour's power, the ascended Saviour's blessing, and the returning Saviour's glory be the joy and comfort of your hearts now and forevermore. Amen.